Hello. Like many across the world, I've been horrified by the murder of George Floyd in the U.S. I've been following the demonstration also in the U.S., but now around the world. I've seen how the police officer and army are using repression. And all of this led me to wonder, what about here? What about Canada? Well, a lot of people have been asking this question and a significant portion of the member of, I would call visible minority, have taken, have spoken and said, yes, there's such thing as systematic discrimination in Canada. And in response, a lot of white men, baby boomers, I said men because they're rarely women who spoke about this. It's mostly white men, like Premier Ford, like Premier Legault in Quebec, like Scott Wilday, that said, no, 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 there's no racism in Canada. Yes, there's a few races, there's a uh, few rotten apples. But it's not true. There's not systematic racism. And by saying this, they completely, they're trying to invalidate the voice of those minority. And we might think, well, Scott, will they resign and, and it's all solved. But no, he's not speaking. But it's, the problem is still there. Because those men never been pulled by the police because they were in the wrong neighborhood. They were driving expensive car for people of color, I would say. Like they would say. They will not, uh, not be called for a job because the name on their resume does not sound Canadian. It would not... Um, They will not... There's so many examples. Sorry, I'm losing my, my mind. This is a reality. And, and maybe are more affected, I don't know, than others because my son is part of a visible minority. He did not choose to be born in Asia as I did not choose to be born in a small village of Saint-Simon, Quebec, in a Caucasian family. And I consider myself, my family, fortunate. We live in a fairly large city that is fairly diversified. My son goes to an element, elementary school with 60 different nationality and still have to teach my 10 years old son that there's, there are people right now that will insult him and will hate him and will continue to do this throughout his life because of the way he look, his origin. He's been told things at 10 that I would not at his age imagine those things would happen, that those kind of things can be said. There's so many people who refuse to acknowledge there is such thing as white privilege. That Life is easier for people who look like me. They will say, oh, my life has been difficult. Uh, I've been poor. I've been fired. I've been... And, and I don't want to negate their experience. But it's not true that everybody start at the same level at birth. It's not true that we live in a, a society that is color blind. It's just that some of us have the privilege to consider others like us. It's not true. And we like it or not. And church people are not better. I had in the last few days, week conversation with ministers 
from Africa or Afro-descendant. And they told us, me and others, so many stories. It's incredible. And, and I would like to share one of those stories. And there's only one among many. This minister living in Western Canada. And been born in Jamaica, living in Canada since, I don't know. And he was helping a congregation to find a new minister. And someone from the congregation on the committees just said, I hope we're not going to be stuck with one of those African or Indian minister with this incomprehensible accent. And I hope we will do better. And he was there front of that person and nobody said anything nobody reacted and what are we supposed to say go to that minister and said oh forget it that's not worth it and what he lived is the equivalent of someone who stood up punching punch him in the face and nobody reacted and we say, oh, no, no, it does not happen. It's not that bad. It's not a big deal. <sighs> we all have a responsibility when it comes to racism, when it comes to discrimination, regardless where we live. Is it a neighborhood or a village or whatever that is diversify or not? Because racism... It's something is always there in our society. It's, it's like a virus that can be triggered in a snap of a finger. A joke, a comment, a reflection in our thought. It's always there in the back of our mind. And all of us have been guilty of this. And we are only a fraction of a second to repeat those patterns. What we can do is maybe to inspire ourselves from the AA movement. First step, to acknowledge that we have a problem. That we struggle to control sometimes. And then work on us, starting with us. The words that I say, my actions my opinions, what I choose to say, to repeat, to accept that people in front of me will say. Do I remain silent because I'm afraid or I say no, that's not right. We can also demand change, something not cosmetic, something profound to make sure that the condition of all is improved. Not my condition. Not what makes me comfortable. Not asking for the government to bring immigrant, but the right kind. No, no, no. All. As Christian, we are called to believe that we are all children of God. All of us are worthy. Well, it needs to show. Every day, not on Sunday morning when we pray, but also on Tuesday afternoon, on Wednesday evening, everywhere we go, in everything we do, it needs to show. These are difficult times. Hopefully, these times will be a wake-up call to all of us, especially us, Caucasian people, white people, about what we can do and how much more we can do and how better we can be so everyone can enjoy life in this country, on this planet Earth. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.